In the 1820s, surgery was a grisly affair. There was no anesthesia. And young medical students were forced to watch and learn. The young man who walked out that day was Charles Darwin. The ordeal of the operating room was too much for him. Over his father's objections, he quit medical school to pursue his dream of becoming a naturalist. Darwin was hired as a naturalist aboard the British Admiralty's HMS Beagle, which embarked on an expedition to survey and map coastal waters around the world. The Beagle was at sea for five years. To Darwin, it seemed an eternity. He shared a small cabin with the captain, with whom he had several disagreements, including the story of creation. Darby. While the captain held to the Bible's account of creation, Darwin believed that the Earth had changed slowly over millions of years. It was a debate that would follow Darwin for the rest of his life. The British government paid for this? No, actually, Darwin's father paid for his voyage and also paid for an assistant to come with Darwin and, and help him uh, skin the specimens and uh, prepare the crates for shipment. He worked in a little poop deck where he had all his specimens, just about something like this. The Beagle made stopovers in ports from Australia to South America, including 36 days in the Galapagos Islands. And Darwin made the most of it. He recorded extensive observations about the indigenous plants and wildlife. He collected and preserved thousands of specimens for study. For years after the voyage, Darwin would recall the observations he made while aboard the Beagle. It was not until 1837, a couple of years after he returned from the Galapagos, that he opened his first species notebook. And he asked himself the question, very ambitious question for a man in his late 20s, what are the laws of life? Is this Darwin's whole point? It was Darwin's whole point to try to find laws operating in the natural world similar to the laws that physicists and chemists had found in inorganic nature. Darwin's search to understand the laws of nature took shape as he studied the animals on the Galapagos Islands. Of special interest to him were the physical differences within a certain species. For example, the finches on the Galapagos had different shaped beaks. They varied according to the environments where the finches live. Some had beaks that were hard and blunt, ideal for hammering open crab shells. Others had beaks that were more tapered and suited for hunting and pecking among rocks. The difference was puzzling. As Darwin analyzed it, he began thinking about how the struggle to survive was the driving force behind all life. If the species is to thrive in its environment, it has to evolve or perish. With this simple yet powerful insight, history was made. Darwin discovered the mechanism that made evolution work, the process of natural selection. Darwin wasn't the first guy really to come up with this, right? What was his special or particular insight? He was the first to, to come up with a specific mechanism, that is natural selection. He was the first to popularize the idea of deep time, millions of years that this process involved. He was the first to popularize the idea of the tree of life in which we're related to all living things. The great geneticist Dobzhansky once said, nothing in biology makes sense without evolution. Because biology today is evolutionary biology. That's what biology is all about and has been all about since 1859. How we got here, what kind of creatures we are, how we're related to everything else in nature. It's been established. We are all part of one great tree of life, plugged into a bloodline, to a DNA that links us to every living thing on Earth. That's not metaphorical. That's literal. 
Why did it take Darwin 20 years to publish his ideas? He knew there would be a storm of religious protest. His own wife was not happy that he was going to write things that were incompatible with the Bible. She wrote him a letter when they were first married saying, I hope that uh, your science will not lead us to spend eternity in two very different places. Wow. And she was seriously concerned about this. Plus, he was trying to build up a mountain of evidence that would be incontrovertible. Finally, in 1859, Darwin published his theory of natural selection. His book, Origin of Species, is considered one of the greatest books ever written. People talk about the theory of evolution, right? But Darwin was the guy that said, well, there, aren't, there isn't any absolute truth here. Darwin, being one of the first modern thinkers, tried to tell us that science is provisional. It changes. What do you mean it's, by provisional? It means it's the best truth you have at the moment. And when you get more data that can't be explained that way, then you have to get a new theory. So it's not an eternal truth. It's a provisional truth. It changes. And he did not want evolution to be accepted as a dogma or a creed. He would have been the first to say, throw it out if you got something better. But we didn't find anything we better. We didn't find anything better. In fact, what we found was that entire new sciences that were undreamed of in Darwin's day have come up through the study of molecular genetics and DNA, which reinforced the idea of evolution, so that now, everywhere we look today, we see something that came from Darwin in science. 